Before we investigate how to improve the cascode current mirror, we want to investigate the issue of headroom, or what uh, we look at as output swing. So imagine that we have a simple amplifier. putting our input in on this PMOS device and we're using we have a DC voltage DC voltage on this NMOS device so we're using it as a current source load to the PMOS device taking our output on the drain so this is a common source amplifier so one thing that we know about this amplifier is that the are the output resistance of this amplifier is simply the output resistance of each individual device in parallel so RO1 in parallel with RO2. And the next thing we want to ask is what's the maximum voltage swing? So we need to figure out how much voltage we need across M1 and how much voltage we need across M2. So we've done this before. We need an overdrive voltage across M1 and one overdrive voltage across M2 in order to keep both the devices saturated. So the maximum the voltage can be at the output, V max, V out max, is equal to VDD minus a VOV, and the minimum voltage at the output is equal to zero or ground plus a VOV. And so if we were looking at the signal in the time domain, if we put a sine wave in, and we label this VO or VDD minus a VOV, and this is a VOV, if we, were putting a, if we were putting a sine wave in, we would see that the, we'd get a sine wave at the output. But if we put too big a sine wave at the input, what would happen is the sine wave would clip at the output. And this would give us all kinds of distortion, would sound kind of bad if we were playing music, for instance, uh, with this kind of clipping behavior. So we want to put input signals in that keep us below this limit. And of course, we'd also like to have the highest limit possible so that we could get the loudest sound, for instance, if we were trying to get uh, drive speakers or if we were looking at some kind of instrument, you know, we would see the largest signal to noise ratio uh, as an example. So what we're really looking at with this BOV is if we look at a plot of the characteristic curve of a transistor and we're looking at an NMOS device, we can plot the drain voltage with respect to, sorry, the drain current with respect to the drain to source voltage. And we know that the slope of this line here corresponds to 1 over the output resistance. of the device once the device is in saturation. And we know that the device enters saturation at a voltage VDSAT or what we've been labeling VOV, the overdrive voltage. So in this region, the device is in saturation. Now we want to avoid signal swings at the drain to source uh, node that send the device beyond saturation and into the triode region. So we, we don't want to do this. So our signal swing has to kind of stay between this VDS sat and whatever the maximum VDS of the of this process is. Now we know that VD sat or VOV is equal to the VGS of the device minus the threshold voltage. And we also know that our drain current is equal to mu n C ox over 2 times W over L times VGS minus VTH squared. And of course, sometimes we include the channel length modulation uh, parameter. In this case, we won't do that. So we're going to make a substitution for VGS minus VTH is equal to VOV and solve for VOV. And we could say that VOV is equal to square root 
of 2 times the drain current divided by mu n c ox times w over l. So we see that our overdrive voltage depends upon the current that we're putting through the device and the geometry of the device. Now this assumption is only really valid for long channel devices, but it will, I mean, it will be maintained for this course. You should be aware that as we transition to smaller and smaller transistors, though, the assumption becomes bad. Now when we're talking about headroom, we like to talk about a parameter called dynamic range. And what dynamic range is, is the maximum output signal divided by the minimum output signal. And what we're going to find is that the maximum output signal is going to be determined by this output swing that we just looked at. And this minimum signal doesn't mean the smallest, uh, uh, smallest uh, voltage that the amplifier can process. It means uh, what's the smallest signal that we can put through this amplifier and still detect. And so we're going to find that this is determined by noise, which we might look at a little bit later in the class. But just be aware that the minimum signal, uh, the, mi the minimum signal swing is determined by noise. And so obviously we'd like this, to, this number to be very large. We'd like our dynamic range to be very big. We want big output swings, uh, and we also want to be able to detect very, very small uh, uh, input, uh, output swings. Okay, so we also have, we, we do have a dilemma though because we'd like our output swing high. But we also want high output resistance. So we saw one way to make our output resistance high was to use that CAS code that we just looked at, but it conflicts with this output swing being high uh, requirement that we'd like to see. And when we use the traditional cascode current mirror that we just looked at, it's particularly a problem because we saw that our V out minimum at the drain of the cascode current source was equal to 2 VOV plus 1 threshold voltage. And this can be very problematic, especially in very, in very small CMOS processes with very low voltages. So in the next part of the lesson, we'll look at improving the CMOS current source or an improvement that we can make to the, to the cascode CMOS current source in order to increase that minimum voltage requirement.